kids basically play as blue team while red team destroys them during the course of the competition. Uh, the college peeps also get uh, these injects from their CEOs and other people telling them great ideas that they need to install these insecure packages and keep them up and let red team just have at it. Um, and then scoring gets based on if they get the injects done, how well they keep red team out and how they can respond. Um, I got into Splunk by that. Um, we had to set it up during one of the competitions and then we had to send all the logs to it and then use it to prove a red team attack. And then we got points if we did a good job, we got some points if we just got it up, stuff like that. So it was fun, I loved it. Um, also in turn for the state of Oklahoma, um, it was fun, talked to the FBI a few times. Uh, it was it was enjoyable. Just watch traffic, see China try to hack into the state agencies all the time. Same with Russia. Um, yeah, it was it was interesting. It was a big eye opener because I was fresh out of college. I'm like, there's no way that really. Oh man. All right, what is Splunk? Um, it's a big data and data It's a big data and data analytical tool. Um, has a free and enterprise version. Um, there's also a dev version, which I'll talk about a little bit later. Um, there's a monitoring, learning tool. Um, it's a sim, security information, event management. Um, this is what most people here will probably be focused on. Basically, you see security alerts, you can correlate them, all that fun stuff. Magical wonder of amazement, happiness. Um, end of the day, it's just it's really just a log aggregation system. For my day-to-day -day work, right now I just maintain Splunk for a bunch of developers who love to pump all their application logs into it, and they use it for debugging. They can find bugs and critical vulnerabilities before they go to prod, which is awesome. Um, parts of Splunk, um, there's one, uh, you could do an all-in-one server where everything just lives on a single instance. Um, normally the free version's like that, but you can have all levels like that. Um, but it's basically split between like a web front end, which is a search head, um, and they can be clustered if you plan to split it out um, with the newest version, 6.2, which came out last October, I think. Um, this is where the users would log in, this is where they type in their searches, stuff like that. This is where they'd search for the logs. On um, the indexers, it's where the data and the logs actually live. Um, they can also be clustered um, since version five, I think, so it, it's nice. Um, Splunk basically uses a flat file system for their logs. It's really weird. Um, they don't use a database. They don't use SQL. They don't use any of that. It's basically a, their own magic formula. Um, there's also the cluster masters, which basically just an arbitrator makes sure the clusters stay maintained. If one's down, what logs need to be active, searchable, stuff like that. Same for the search heads. Which search heads should be active, stuff like that. Um, and then the license master, which Splunk themselves care about the most. Um, basically, you log volumes per day, so gigabytes per day, and Splunk basically says, okay, this is your license, this is how much you can log per day to the indexer. So I'll talk about what happens if you break that in a little bit later. Um, there's also the Splunk forwarder. It is uh, used to send the logs from the servers to the indexers. You can have it set up to like a structured format and to like a specific index, which is basically just like a barrel where your logs would live. Um, knowing what you want from Splunk is pretty important. Um, also, Splunk has a ton of like random phrases. One is like, find your Achilles heel before a Trojan does. There's a t-shirt, there's a sticker. Um, another one is taking the SH out of IT, stuff like that. Um, but like if you're planning to use Splunk or any log aggregator, you got to know like what you want to log, um, make sure you're not just pouring every single log that you think you want in it because you're just going to make a bunch of noise and it may not be helpful to you anymore. Um, you also got to figure out like how to correlate your logs, make it useful. Um, do you want to do like preventive stuff with Splunk to where like if you see these attacks you run a script on Splunk and turn off a port or do you just want to be reactive or if you saw an attack and you got a user that says, hey, my laptop's dead, and you get on logs from that laptop, you can go into Splunk, look at what they did, look at their traffic, stuff like that. Um, also, what kind of attacks, SQL injection, you just, uh, SQL injection, uh, just basically front end attacks or going after the hosts themselves, stuff like that. Um, other sims on the market is like ArcSight, LogLogic is another big one, HP ArcSight, um, there's also another one, Elk, which is pretty popular. That's not a sim, more of just another log aggregator. 
Um, that one's a more popular open source one that's gaining traction. Um, why is Splunk big in security? They have a special premium app that you need to pay for on top of Splunk. Um, right now they're on version 3.0. Um, it helps, uh, it adds a bunch of features that people want out of their sim. It adds dashboards, fancy graphs, stuff like that. Um, it also adds a different, um, what's the word, agents that it'll basically pop up where like if it sees the Zeus version, it'll tell you, hey, this Zeus version was installed on this laptop, stuff like that. Um, it also meets certain uh, Department of Defense standards. Um, I couldn't find out which exact standards they meet, but uh, I've, that's what I've been told. They've, uh, they meet certain standards. Obviously, a salesperson told me, so maybe they're lying. But <laughs> um, here's a basic setup of Splunk. This is kind of what I'm getting my lab to set up as. Uh, you have like the Windows box, you have install a forwarder on, it goes straight to the Splunk server. You have just a, another Linux box, you can also have a Splunk forwarder installed in that. Those go on port like 997, which is a special uh, Splunk forwarding port it uses. That's just the default port, it can be anything you want. Splunk server, um, here just like the all-in-one. Um, and then like you have stuff like PFSense and you can send stuff via like syslog. So you can also have like a forwarder installed on just like your end user laptop, stuff like that. So depending on what you want to log, you can basically throw it into Splunk and see what happens and then try to format it so Splunk can use it and your end users can use it. Um, how to get Splunk, just download it from their site. Uh, when you download it, it gives you a temporary enterprise trial license. Um, maximum indexing volume of 500 megabytes a day, which you can go through pretty quick. Um, Enterprise license, like I said, multiple user accounts and user controls, distributed search, data routing, you get the clustering basically. You get deployment manager. Uh, deployment manager is basically something where you can deploy the forwarders onto devices with Splunk. I don't have much um, knowledge in that because we use other stuff for our Splunk instance. We actually use Chef to push out the configuration in the app. So um, for home dev, you go to dev.splunk.com. Uh, this is actually the developer trial license. It gives you the enterprise version, um, 10 gigs a day. Um, so it's quite nice. And then six month, every the, the license itself expires in six months. All you have to do is like send an email to Splunk saying, hey, I want this renewed, and they'll send you a new license. Um, fun stuff. There's also an academic curriculum license, which is five gigs a day for a year. It's the same as developer license, except it's five gigs and it's for a whole year instead of the six months. It's set for using it in labs and academic use. Um, Splunk Enterprise is the big one that people like. This is the one where you can actually use the Enterprise uh, security app on it and all the other premium apps that Splunk calls it. These are apps you have to pay for additionally, stuff like that. This is the big thing when you hear that it's really expensive about Splunk. This is the version they're talking about. Um, they tout you don't get charged for the number of users, you don't get charged for cores or the amount of nodes. Pretty much store whatever you want on these. You have as many instances as you want, as long as you don't go over the license of so many gigs a day being uh, indexed. So that's your big one. You could have like a non-prod and prod, and they can share one license of like the 10 gigs a day, but if your non-prod instance does like 11 gigs and your prod does one gig, they both get strikes, stuff like that. Um, I'll talk about Splunk's strike system as well in a bit. Um, there's also a new version of Splunk, which I think came out this year, Splunk Lite. You only do five users, you have to have a single server, you still don't get charged for what you put in it, and then you don't, no charge for the total amount based on your gigs per day license. So, like five gigs a day, stuff like that. Um, other things to consider if you're doing, wanting to do Splunk or any other log aggregation system. Forming your logs in a meaningful way. Timestamps are really important for the logs. Um, time zones are also really important because you don't want to go three to four hours into the future to try to find logs because they have the wrong timestamp or wrong time zone. This has happened multiple, multiple times. Um, people, you know, send me a, you know, angry email saying, hey, my logs were in Splunk, but they're old and I can't find this and I know it just happened. We look and then we have to look into the future and we're like, you're sending your logs into the future, just please fix your timestamps. Um, 
it's happened more times, I've lost count. So source types, um, this is like HTTP logs, firewall logs, stuff like that, fun times. Um, making sure you're logging useful data. You don't want to just dump as much stuff as you want because then it doesn't become useful at all and then you ruin your license which is where it comes to strikes, five strikes, and a 30-day rolling window. And what Splunk will do is basically, you can keep sending logs into Splunk and it will keep indexing it and storing it for you. But after the fifth strike, you can no longer search any of the stuff that you've indexed. Um, you have to send Splunk, uh, and I'm, a, I'm really sorry email, I didn't mean to, um, and then they will normally lift it and be like, don't let it happen again. And when our salesperson comes to talk to you again, we'll make sure to remind you every five sentences that you broke your strike license and you should buy more. <laughs> um, more Splunk, Splunk Cloud, just send it into that magical cloud. You don't care, all you know is your logs are going to the cloud and they will be safe and your users can just log into this magical cloud user interface. You don't have to worry about setting up the servers. You just have to worry about paying for that license because everyone's going to send all their logs to your cloud instance. Um, I think it's kind of controlled with certs, uh, but I haven't dug into it yet. Uh, we don't use it where I work, so sorry. Um, Hunk, another big thing. This is for the Hadoop clusters, stuff like that. They charge per node. It's still quite expensive as well. It's a couple grand per node, but if you can get use out of it, then maybe it's worth it for you. Um, our, the way we used to do, but wasn't compatible with Hunk, so we, we couldn't do anything with it either. Uh, Splunk Mint is also kind of new, it got released last year. It's to get app, uh, like mobile data into Splunk. Um, basically, if you have mobile applications, stuff like that, it's able to pull the information out of that and uh, put, pump it into Splunk as well, and Splunk will put it in a nice format so you can search it. Um, other Splunk apps, like the Fire, FireEye app, Palo Alto, Cisco Security Suit, I mean, they've got a bunch of stuff. Um, it's pretty interesting. Some are, most of them are free. Splunk now has more premium apps. The main security one that everyone loves is a premium app that you have to pay extra for. But I think FireEye, Palo Alto, I think they're free, but you have to have like the device itself and you have to have agreement with them. And basically you have to have Splunk to send logs to and you have to have their license. Obviously Splunk just wants you to send everything into it and buy as much license as possible. Because, I mean, that's how they make money. Um, one app I like to focus on is a home monitor app because it's a good starting place. Um, it's pretty interesting. It's, uh, it's made for like home routers, stuff like that, but like it's also compatible with PFSense. I have not gotten PFSense to work really well for Splunk yet. I haven't tested this app. Um, I had an ESXi host set up, but it died on me, so I blasted away, and I'm trying to rebuild my lab now. Um, so. We'll see. Um, it also has what's called a bad guy hunter dashboard. I've got a screenshot of it after this. It's pretty interesting. Um, it could be a good place to start. Set up a single Splunk instance VM, VirtualBox, VMware, stuff like that. Have your home router that you have. Don't use Google's home router because I can't find a way to get logs out of it. Um, and I spent a couple hours looking. So if any of you have Google Fiber, anyone Google Fiber? Yeah. yeah. If, if you know how to get the logs out of that router, please let me know so I can try, try, try yeah. <laughs> Jeez, oh my God. Uh, well, yeah, okay, so maybe if I give another talk in the future, I'll be like, yeah, then I figured it out. But we'll see. Um, it's really interesting, has a bunch of neat features involved in it, a bunch of, um, Stuff like that. Like I said, good hunter, da bad guy hunter dashboard is pretty interesting. Um, like I said, I'm hoping to use it for future talks. I'm trying to get my lab set up um, to actually show attacks going into different systems using then having the logs going to Splunk, and then correlating it, showing in a talk how to backtrack, backstep into attack, and see where stuff is coming from. Um, here's that screenshot I was telling you about. This is basically just seeing a guy from China, you know, try to. SSH into this guy's router, so it's pretty interesting. Um, what Splunk can do for you, it's great. It can also be really, really expensive. Um, I looked at prices, but I didn't want to make this a sales pitch, so I didn't mention them, but it does run several thousand dollars. So um, Splunk Lite, like I said, a little cheaper, but it's made for smaller companies, instances. But they do have the dev.splunk 
license that pretty much anyone can download. You're not supposed to use it for prod use, so you shouldn't because it's bad. Um, like I said, it spunks great. Get multiple types of logs. Like I said, system log, router, firewall logs, all that fun stuff. Even those cranky window logs that you need to use to find out why this user downloaded this piece of malware. It's all. You can send that straight into Splunk. Um, it's fairly straightforward to get set up. Um, you just, you basically, there's, there's a really good tutorial on Splunk's website as well. Basically, you pump stuff in and it'll tell you how to do some graphs. Um, you can get a Splunk VM set up fairly straightforward, um, step by step. They make it super simple. Linux, Windows, it's pretty simple. Um, like I said, there's documentation's really good um, for both the free and the paid. They have an IRC channel that I will list on the next slide, um, and they will respond to questions, anything you need, great. They've got customers in there, and basically Splunk engineers as well, they'll answer all your questions. Um, it's, it's definitely not a magic box. You do have to work to get stuff to actually look the way you want. You can't just, you know, decide to install it on a Windows client and then be like, I'm gonna send every single log that this server holds into Splunk and see what I find. Um, well, you can, and you're probably gonna be like, <laughs> there goes my license. Um, <laughs> Cause that may have happened as well to me. Sorry. Um, Splunk download, splunk.com. All that stuff. For the dev Splunk license, dev.splunk.com. I didn't know about this till like earlier this year for some reason. Um, that's where you can get the dev 10 gig license. It's the enterprise version. This way you can play with all the bells and whistles and developer setting. Um, they have it so you can create apps for Splunk and basically make them more money. Um, the home monitoring app, I have a link here. Um, but the IRC channel, uh, it's on efnet.org, um, pound Splunk. Um, bunch of smart people in there, they know what they're talking about. All that fun stuff. Um, a lot of customers that do like terabytes and petabytes of logs a day and they have these crazy setups. So a lot of them really know basic ins and outs on how to get your Splunk set up correctly. Um, also, thank you. Uh, thanks to KFC for letting me ramble. Um, big thanks to Kansas Hall for hosting us again and uh, see you on the, the Wednesday, Friday. oh, second Tuesday, right? Second Tuesday, right? It's not, it's not second Tuesday. Is it, is it changing? No. It's not, it's not changing today. No, okay. <laughs> yes. Yeah, We're here tomorrow. Thanks, second everyone. Tuesday. It's good stuff. Anybody have any questions? I hope, I hope not. I wasn't ready for questions. No, well, no, that's, that's fine. That's fine. Um, it,